Welcome. As part of VM Blog's um, coverage of DockerCon, we're here with NeoVector, or New Vector, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and we're talking with Henrik Rosendahl, who's the head of business development. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. How are you guys? Good. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit of the background of the company and um, for people that didn't go to the show and maybe haven't heard of you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, happy to do that. So, so New Vector is a um, security uh, software company uh, for uh, for Docker and and uh, and more and more uh, Kubernetes. Um, you know, we've been around for about two years. Uh, the core of the team came from from VMware and from Cisco and Trend Micro, and we um, are focusing on protecting containers at at runtime. Great. So I know, <laughs> I know New Vector uh, exhibited at DockerCon this year. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the event itself and provide some of your observations from the show? Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. I mean, you know, we were there um, in Austin last year, um, and I think there is some 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 really interesting observations here. One is that it's definitely a maturing crowd, right? So the that the customers and the partners that are there are are being, you know, more serious. You know, the it almost feels like we're at the sort of the the the, the crest of the of the hype cycle, right? Where you know all the noise is dying down and people are starting to get sort of a more uh, realistic uh, approach and outlook to to containers. Um, it felt like there was a lot of confusion last year. That seems to have died down. Um, there's also obviously the elephant in the room is um, there's a lot fewer vendors this year in the you know exhibiting in the expo hall, um, which was you know in in part good for for everybody else that was there because we had a, a lot of traffic, a lot of, of of really serious conversations with customers. So I think you know DockerCon perhaps is is not becoming the the container industry conference, but more of a Docker specific ecosystem conference, which means that you know it's 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 not going to be the RSA or the VM world, but but it's a more going to be more of a targeted conference. And um, so, what did you guys show at DockerCon? Do you have uh, any new releases or new things that you were showing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course, right? You know, for every for every trade show, you have to, um, you know, announce some some new shiny objects. And so, um, you know, our release of of new vectors, you know, version two point coincided with uh, with DockerCon this uh, this year. And so we were um, were able to to show uh, for the first time the the auto response module that we've been working on for almost a year, um, where we can set up. Parameters as they pertain both to the global environment, but also to specific services and all the way down to individual containers and, and put up sort of security conditions. So if you have a container with multiple vulnerabilities, are you going to quarantine it or are you going to, you know, observe this closer? So all these sort of automatic responses with some of the, the stuff that we um, that we showcased. Um, we also showcased our new uh, baseline uh, features such that we we observe what is you know normal behavior for a container. Um, that's that's relatively easy to do because a container is so singular in its purpose, right? There's typically only one process running. It's taking you know data from one and sending it on to another. And so we we have a very strong baseline capability now that will then spot any outliers and, and use that as a trigger for a bunch of, 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 of security uh, features. Um, also, you know, after being in the market for over a year now, customers are asking for more enterprise features, right? So role-based access control is, is one of them. Um, if you run in, in Kubernetes, carving things up based on namespace is another one. And, and of course, you know, sending all your data um, to Splunk or or any any sim tool would be would be a third one. So so it's basically sort of becoming more of a you know end to end um, solution now. 
And, and you, you sort of talked about the maturity of, uh, of Docker and certainly, you know, VM blog uh, readers will see that, you know, container news being covered on VM blog uh, is growing. It's all over the place these days. Uh, are you seeing any changes in how fast the market adoption for containers is moving? Yeah, so I would say, I think even for us that sort of live and breathe this every day, I think the 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 pace with which people shifted towards Kubernetes and any sort of flavor thereof, I think came as a surprise to all of us, right? A year ago, there was Amazon ECS, there was, you know, Docker Swarm, there was all these different, you know, orchestration tools. Now it's just, you know, it's literally just all Kubernetes. It could be Red Hat's OpenShift, it could be EKS, you know, it could be Kubernetes native, but I would say probably 80% plus have have gone down that path. So so I think that that in itself was quite you know astounding. You know the the pace with which that happened. You know the the other thing is is people are getting more serious as I alluded to earlier. Um, you know this it's going from oh my god we can we can use containers for everything to hey you know we need to to think about how are we going to design a, a network policy, how we're going to design a security policy, you know, around all this. So, you know, in 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 many ways, reminiscent to VMware ten years ago, as as we were moving from you know test and dev and very early prod to to sort of I wouldn't call it mainstream yet, but we're definitely on on that path. So. It seems like the battle for Kubernetes public cloud services is heating up. Um, who are the players and how does New Vector support them? Right. So the good news about New Vector is that we are, we're, we're platform agnostic. I mean, we have spent a lot of energy integrating into Kubernetes. So we do, for instance, namespace integration, our back if you're open shift. So we're, we're sort of you know, integrating deeper and deeper into the platforms. So from that perspective, we really support them all. I think what's what's interesting is that Kubernetes is now sort of table stakes, right? Um, but we're seeing some of the more mature production level companies are actually not running Amazon EKS, right? They are running their own EC2 instances where they are running their own Kubernetes clusters. Um, they, they, I don't think they want to be tied to a particular sort of instance or version of, of Kubernetes at this point in time. They either run around like OpenShift on EC2 or, or you know, even in, uh, in, in Azure. So um, that, that's kind of an interesting sort of uh, observation, I think. And uh, while, I, while I have you uh, captured, uh, I, I know I, I just want to ask you as an expert in this field, uh, are there any uh, uh, sort of significant technology innovations that are coming either for container platforms themselves or even new vector that you want to share? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of um, talk about, you know, Amazon and, and their Fargate, right? And so as, as customers are sort of, um, overwhelmed by the complexity of, of running their own Kubernetes clusters, maybe, you know, a, a, a sort of an, a managed version of that seems like a, a, a really good idea. So that would be sort of EKS and Fargate, which is sort of on the, on the path to serverless. I think um, there's not, you know, one size that fits all in, in that instance. So we'll see how this goes. It's going to be a blend, I think, of, of, of serverless and, and containers and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but good old VMs, um, you know, particularly for a guy that used to work for VMware. Um, I also see a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of interest in, in, in Istio as a, as a community project, right? Um, and, you know, that seems to have a lot of, of sort of backing from a variety of different vendors. And so Istio and, and their network policies is definitely something that new vector is, is is watching closely and, and and integrating too. So so we become the security mesh on on top of this, you know, network network mesh that that Istio is creating, right? 
Um, so say those two things are, are things that we're watching closely. Um, you know, on the on the new vector platform side, uh, you know, because this is predominantly an enterprise play at this point, you know, integrating into customers' existing environment becomes really critical. Um, we just did a, a a webinar the other day with uh, with Black Duck and Synopsys, um, and so. You know, a lot of customers are already using Black Dock for image scanning and code scanning, and so you know we were we were talking about how can you integrate that into a containerized environment, and also form the policies for runtime protection based on some of the image scanning results, right? So so that's kind of what we're what we're up to, and you know over the next um, three to six months we'll be announcing. Uh, a lot of other um, a lot of other partnerships in this uh, in this space right so that's you know that's what customers are expecting at, at, at this juncture is is not sort of like a, a standalone solution or yet another tool but something that integrates very nicely into into the existing processes oh great we know uh, we know you're a busy person and we uh, certainly appreciate you taking time to speak with VM blog and uh, sharing your expertise on containers and updating us on uh, new vector. So uh, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Hey, thanks for having me. And then for the folks who are watching, uh, what's the best place for them to go if they want to learn more about uh, about new vector? You know, newvector.com is a good place to start. We have a great uh, Kubernetes security guide for people that want to sort of dive into the into the details and, and get a checklist, not only for 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 new vectors product, but just sort of like a, a sort of a broad guide for for protecting you know your containers at, at runtime. So that would be a good good place to start.